Okay, in this section, I'm going to be describing the uh, the ransack voting process and the uh, PNP solving process that's used in uh, my implementation. So uh, that starts right here in this pipeline py file. Uh, I call this eval models function in which you can pass a list of model sets. So what a model set is, it's contained in this class file. Uh, basically, just a name and then the class that it's associated with. So the default is uh, the cat model, um, and then the model name. Uh, so here I'm passing a dictionary uh, with a class model entry and a vec model entry. Uh, so that uh, is handled here. Uh, if it is a dictionary, then it should be two separate models. This means that we're doing kind of like the... Um, so we're, we're using a different model for our class predictions uh, than we are for our vector predictions. Uh, that's what this code handles, and it builds this model wrapper, which is another class that I have here. Uh, all the model wrapper does, like similar, similarly to what I have in the model class, it sets uh, the... So in the case that you're passing two models, uh, it sets the class model to the model passed in the as in the class model entry of the dictionary, uh, and same thing for the vec model, and sets the combined uh, boolean to false. Uh, in the case of the combined model, it just sets a combined model variable, and then we also have this gen predict function. That's all like the model wrapper handles is uh, generating the prediction. So if it's combined, it uses the com the combination model and returns uh, the two predictions as a tuple, uh, otherwise it just uh, returns the predictions from the vector model and the class model. Uh, so that's what's happening there. Um, we, and then we use this model wrapper function. Uh, so the purpose of that model wrapper function is just to be able to use uh, both modes of uh, model structures interchangeably, at least uh, like the code looks the same here. Um, so yeah, so for range trials, uh, first we go and we get our data split image. Uh, that is handled here, uh, so we pass this a uh, true value for which means that we're getting data from our valid data. So we we, get, we load our data split, and then we uh, uh, because our get valid boolean is true, we go in here and we're getting this valid data choice. We open it, we read that label, and we also get that image, and we're passing that back uh, to be used as our input. So and then here we're using our model wrapper that we built up here. Uh, so we get our coordinates prediction and our class prediction just from the gen predict function, uh, and then. Uh, what do we have here? So this is our predict pose function. This and this is um, the uh, the ransack voting and also the PNP uh, solution are contained in here. Um, so let's take a look at that. So up here, that is open. Um, so ignore this. This was used uh, when I was like testing this. Um, so the first thing that we do is uh, we first we're finding the population that our model has identified as be as belonging to the object. So we're saying uh, we're using this numpy where function. Uh, these are numpy arrays being passed through. Our classes array is greater than mask threshold. So our mask threshold is uh, as stated here. The minimum value for the pixel will be considered in the ransack process. So uh, I have a couple variables up here that we can change, and uh, that'll change. Um, sort of the behavior or some, you know, what are they called? Uh, anyway, so, so some of the arguments of like the, this algorithm. Um, so we can, we can change the number of hypotheses, we can change our ransack threshold, uh, and our mask threshold, and, I think, and this was used for testing and also a proving ratio, but we'll, I'll describe those as they come up. Uh, so the population is just to get the pixels that are uh, related to our object. Uh, here we say if it doesn't find any, then we return a false value. So that's why we're returning kind of a boolean. Uh, otherwise, this returns a true value to indicate that uh, this part of the function has worked successfully. Um, we can ignore this. This was also for testing. So we uh, we now we can go to our ransack voting population. So our coords is the uh, coordinates prediction. So our unit vector prediction, and we're also passing this population, which is similarly to what we did when we were uh, generating the training data. We're zipping it into a y x format. Uh, yeah. So going into the ransack voting function. Um, this is a lot of kind of like geometric math. I think I briefly described kind of the process here in the uh, introduction. But uh, so for n in range num hypotheses, that's one of these uh, hyperparameters. That's what I was looking for earlier. Um, but uh, we uh, take two pixels and find the intersection of the unit vectors. So this is pixel one is pop random rand range len population. So this gives us. A, uh, a random uh, pixel from our population. We're popping it out of the population so we don't reuse it. Uh, and then we get uh, our v1, our vector one, is the coordinates at that y and that x. Uh, 
Uh, similar, we do that for another one, so P2, that's our second pixel, and we get our second vector. Uh, then for i in range 9, so there are 9 uh, key points that we're doing here, uh, we're finding the line's intersection and using that as our hypothesis. So I'm doing some, you know, basic geometric stuff here. The m1 uh, is the slope of, so vector, like, I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure that this is all correct. Uh, I, did, I, I wrote it, like, maybe a week or two ago, uh, but it's, it's reasonably straightforward. Uh, here I'm checking if um, the slopes are going to are not going to intersect. So if they're not going to intersect, we actually just ignore the key point, and that's all fine. Uh, here we're finding the so according to the y equals mx plus b formula, that's what we're all finding here. We finally find our x value, we find our y value, and uh, we initialize with our weight of zero. So for voter and population, so population is now that list of uh, that list of pixels. Uh, minus the two hypothesis, the two pixels that we popped out to generate the hypothesis. Uh, so for voter in the population, we're doing kind of a similar process to what we did to find that uh, to generate the unit vectors in our training data in the first place. We're finding a y difference. We're finding an x difference. Uh, math square root. I believe that this is just uh, generating the unit vector. Um, so we have a vector here. What's going on? Vector. Oh, so this is the actual vector of the coordinate uh, according to this i. So this is the key point. This is the uh, unit vector returned by our vector predicting model. Um, and we compare that in this ransack val. We compare, we, I think that we take the dot product of the two. So v2 equals lin out uh, on. Right. Uh, and I believe that this is the dot product, uh, and we're saying if that is greater than the ransack threshold, which is another one of the hyperparameters that we have at the top, uh, I'm saying that it's 0.99, so it has to be a very close match, then uh, we increment the weight. Uh, after that's all done, uh, after we've gone through the pop for the voter and population, uh, we have this, uh, hy this uh, dictionary that we're building. Um, this hypothesis dic dictionary that we're building, and we say for that key entry we're appending uh, this coordinate, so the y and x value that we're examining, and also the weight that we've built here. And uh, after that, uh, after we're done with those two pixels, we, we add them back into the population uh, so they can be used in further hypotheses. So after that's all done, we, we return this uh, hypothesis dictionary. This hypothesis dictionary now has, so we have keys from 0 to 8 representing the nine key points that we're looking at, those eight bounding box key points and the one centroid key point. Um, and that get, and for each in each of these lists, uh, there is uh, one of these values, the coordinate along with the associated weight that we've got through the uh, ransack voting. Uh, that gets returned right here. And then we have this if pruning value. So this pruning is another thing that I'm experimenting with. Uh, we can take a look at that when we're examining the results, but uh, basically uh, you can I have this prune ratio, so it prunes the the lowest, you know, x uh, percent of uh, of the weights. So the prune hypes all it does is like it sorts uh, each of these lists by the weight and uh, takes out the smallest ones according to the percent that we have here. So for 0.5, it'll delete 50% of them. Um, and then we also have this mean uh, dict, or sorry, this get mean function, which returns a dictionary similar to this one, except instead of a list of uh, of uh, coordinates with associated weights, it just uh, returns the average. Uh, nothing too interesting there. Um, okay, so here uh, we have this alt labels uh, boolean. Um, the alt label, this comes from uh, something that they did in PVNet. So they, they said that they got better results uh, not using the bounding box corner coordinates, but actually uh, key points that are uh, that they generated on the surface of the uh, 3D model through this like mathematical process where they just say, you know, the furthest point from the centroid and then the furthest point from all of the key points that exist now already and they do that, you know, n times. Um, so I actually did both methods. They they gave their uh, they gave their um, 3D, you know, coordinate data. Uh, so that let me that let me generate training data that uses these kind of like alt labels, which are the uh, the key points on the surface of it. Uh, so we can um, build models that are trained on both methods. So that's what that's for. You, you pass this alt labels uh, boolean according to which uh, data set your model has been trained on, and that's what's happening here. 
uh, you can see that at either loads, uh, so this is when we're getting our 3D object data. Uh, we have this load text and it's loading some kind of alt points, uh, which is, and, and then it can also load this like bounding box one in the case that it's not using the alt labels. Also, what do we have here? Uh, predictions equals dictionary to array. So we're passing back finally uh, a NumPy array of uh, the hypotheses. And in, yeah, in this case, uh, we ignore uh, the centroid prediction because I think that that wasn't given in uh, the bounding box uh, 3D uh, key points. Anyways, uh, check preds is not false. I think this was another testing thing. Yeah, it was. Um, so finally, we get this uh, draw points. Right, so in each case, uh, we're going to be drawing uh, the bounding box over the generated pose, uh, which is found in this PNP function. So let's check that out. Um, I gotta go to Sorry. Okay, so now we have our uh, our array of 3D key points. We have our uh, t array of the corresponding 2D key points, so they're in the same order uh, in each of those arrays. And then we have uh, our array of the points of the 3D key points that we're actually going to be drawing onto our image. So in the case where we're uh, using just the bounding box as our 3D key points for our unit vector predictions, uh, these two are going to be the same thing. Uh, our draw points is always going to be this uh, bounding box 8 3D object, and in the case where we're not using alt labels, that's uh, what we're that's where we're getting this points 3D from. Um, but in the case where we're using alt labels, uh, the 3D key points are going to be those uh, alternate points uh, read from a different file. Um, anyway. So we go into this PNP function with uh, those variables in hand, and uh, so that's what they look like in here. Uh, we have uh, the camera matrix, so I found this somewhere online, um, but this is uh, the matrix values for the connect camera, which is what we use to take the photos in the uh, line mod data set. Um, we do some assertion stuff here, some transformations that I don't think actually do anything. Um, and then uh, we, we hand uh, these values, so our 3D key points, our 2D key points, our matrix. Uh, these are distortion coefficients, and then this is a flag for method, uh, something else that I could experiment with uh, to see the results that we get. But uh, we hand that to the CV2 solve PNP function. So I don't do any of the manual uh, solve PNP stuff in this uh, project implementation, but you can kind of imagine uh, what's going on. Like we have like a 3D model or 3D key points, and then we have co corresponding uh, 2D key points on an image. So the job of this function is to figure out uh, where the camera is uh, so such that uh, these 3D, 3D points can be represented uh, on a 2D image according to how our, our 2D key points have been given, uh, if that makes sense. So uh, that's what that's what happens here, and it, it passes back. Uh, I think that this is some kind of boolean indicating if uh, this uh, returned a value or not, and then it gives a rotation and a translation vector. Uh, so the rotation vector is the rotation of the camera relative to the object set of coordinates, and the translation vector similarly is the translation vector relative to the object set of coordinates. Uh, so once we have that, uh, we're ready to draw uh, our chosen draw points onto the array. So these are this is another set of uh, 3D key points. So you imagine um, the object centroid is at the uh, origin of this like 3D coordinate set, you know, a, an X, Y, Z, uh, well, you know, the same thing that uh, if you're, you know, a STEM person or whatever have done uh, mathematical stuff, uh, you know, you'll be very familiar with like these kind of like X, Y, Z coordinate systems. Uh, so these dr this draw points function is in the same coordinate system. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, th what this project points does is once we hand once we hand uh, this function uh, the 3D points that we're interested in finding the pixels of, and we we also hand it uh, the rotation vector and the translation vector that we just got from here, and our camera matrix distortion coefficients, and the type of I'm not sure what this is the type of, actually, but the type of some of these values. Uh, then it's going to hand us back uh, our plot points, which is our 2D key points, and this Jacobian, uh, which is some kind of mathematical, uh, you know, distortion matrix. It's something related to, you know, a camera distortion or something uh, that I don't use. Um, anyway, uh, so we're that's once we have our plot points, we're ready to uh, draw 
uh, the bounding box generated by this entire process. Uh, so that's what happens back here. We're returning back to uh, this predict post function, which returns the PMP function. Uh, so that's going all the way back down here. Um, where's predict pose? And we come up with these y pred values. So these are our 2D uh, coordinates uh, for the key points. Um, so uh, we have, uh, and also, so this res value is true if uh, that whole process went okay. Uh, otherwise, it just ignores it and prints this kind of like little error message and continues. Um, otherwise, uh, we can actually see how close we were to our uh, true values. So here I have my y pred values, uh, or y prediction values. Uh, here we're, re we're getting our y true values, so I have this uh, label floats to pixels function uh, in my data. Um, so where's that? Label floats to pixels. Uh, so that just takes, uh, we're taking the labels uh, file that we got earlier, and we are reading it and getting um, coordinate, uh, we're getting, uh, what is it, uh, like the pixel coordinates for each of the key points in that labels file and uh, returning a list of them in the same order. So now we can uh, actually just use a, uh, so there's a tf loss function here. Uh, so, right, we are, so for each uh, prediction that we're doing, we're appending to our, we're, we've got this thing called a true list, which is our true uh, key point coordinates, and we have our pred list, which is our predicted key point coordinates. Uh, for each iteration, uh, we can print uh, an error. So we have uh, mean absolute error and mean squared error, uh, just uh, being measured by those. And also there's this boolean here uh, called show image choice. Uh, basically that's if you want to see the, the bounding box actually be drawn on the image, which is useful for testing and kind of like get, lets you know immediately if the model is working or not, uh, rather than just getting uh, a loss uh, value or an accurate uh, uh, accuracy metric. Um, so that's what that does. Uh, and uh, so the draw pose essentially, there's nothing too fancy going on here. Uh, we have our 2D key points and uh, it's just drawing lines between key points. So we have this draw points. Uh, I, can, I think I convert it to a dictionary and then there's something like BLD stands for back, back left down uh, being drawn to back left up. So that's like the the bottom left, uh, or sorry, the back left uh, and lowest key point being drawn to like uh, the car, so the key point straight above it. Uh, anyway, you're, I'm drawing, I'm drawing the bounding box is what's happening here. You don't, so that's you know a set of whatever like twelve lines. Uh, so that's what happens here. Uh, what do we have here at the end? Uh, we eventually. We take we take our lists here that we've built out of our, our y true and our y preds, and uh, we convert them to arrays, and then we can actually give the average uh, law, uh, the average accuracy metrics that we were uh, giving throughout uh, for each iteration. So uh, hopefully that'll make sense. Um, with that, I think that we can actually look at some model results. So that's gonna be happening next.